Want to see a game that makes a 2080 Super a minimum recommended GPU? Minimum. We're talking 1080p low settings. Well, 1080p low slash medium settings as the system requirements uh, have shown it. This is Immortals of Avium, and this is gonna be one of the first Unreal Engine 5.1 AAA games. And um, anyway, let's, let's take a look here. So we have the system requirements right here. Where am I getting this from? This is from EA.com. They have an article about this game and its technology. Its use of Unreal Engine 5.1, features like Lumen, uh, Nanite, all of that, how they use it to implement their vision, which the developers are saying themselves is, we chose not to be practical. <laughs> in other words, they say, you can see in other fantasy games where they backed off on some of the detail because it wasn't practical. We chose not to be practical, but in order to do all this, we had to make the hard decision not to support older video cards and the previous generation of consoles. So uh, as, as said, um, we get some beefy system requirements here. They do note that we're going to continue optimizing the game all the way up to launch, so these may change. And if they do, we'll, make, uh, we'll be sure to make that clear. So as we get closer to the launch date, which uh, should be in here somewhere, I think it's July 20th. Pretty sure it's July 20th. I'll probably find it in here at some point before the video is done. Uh, anyway, so maybe I'll do an updated video if there's updated system specs, but for now, not only are the minimum CPUs eight core CPUs, and we will certainly talk about the CPUs, I think more of you guys will be interested in the GPUs. Although we can note that it's 16 gigabytes of RAM. Some games lately have uh, been recommending 32. So this one does just say 16 all across the board. But yeah, there's your uh, GPU, the RTX 2080 Super, being listed as 1080p 60 FPS at low medium settings. And it's listed alongside the Radeon RX 5700 XT, which I think is actually a little bit surprising in that I think this GPU should usually be a bit weaker than the 2080 Super. And you know what, let's just go right ahead and uh, talk about 1440p. So. For 1440p medium high settings, medium high settings, okay, so not even maxing out the game at 1440p 60 frames per second, they're recommending a 3080 Ti or an RX 6800 XT. Now this is also an interesting pairing. Uh, one thought is that the 3080 usually would match closer to the 6800 XT if it's the non-Ti version. So it could be a power difference, you know, an optimization difference between AMD and NVIDIA in this game. Or this could be VRAM related because the 3080 Ti has 12 gigabytes of VRAM and the normal 3080 only had 10 and the 6800 XT has 16 gigabytes of VRAM. And we have seen a lot of the latest uh, big releases um, being a bit very VRAM demanding. So I'm curious if this is VRAM related or performance related on the optimization between AMD and NVIDIA. They're also definitely recommending 110 gigabytes SSD. Uh, again, SSD strongly recommended. Okay, so let's dig into some of these details a little bit more. So the 5700 XT is the minimum AMD GPU that they're listing and they're listing the NVIDIA GPU as the 2080 Super. Now, the reason why that's a little bit surprising is that the, um, you know, NVIDIA GPUs more like the 2070 or 2070 Super or RTX 3060 would normally be considered closer competitors to the 5700 XT. Although the, uh, the database I'm using here is the Tech Power Up uh, Relative Performance uh, Database for GPUs, which is very convenient, it works very well, but I don't think it really gets updated as um, drivers affect performance over time. So I have heard that the 5700 XT, which is one of the GPUs I actually don't have to test myself, has improved a lot with drivers over time. So perhaps that's gonna bring it a little bit closer to the 2080 Super. Um, but in general, this is a pretty hefty ballpark, even if we go off the 5700 XT. Uh, we're talking RTX 3060, uh, you know, RTX 2070, 2060 Super, RX 6600 is a bit weaker, 5700 is a bit weaker, the 2060 is weaker, the GTX 1080 is weaker, um, you know, things like the 3050 are a lot weaker, <laughs> popular cards like the 1660 Super, 1660, a lot weaker, guys. 
And again, we're st talking about we're already down to low medium settings at 1080p. So that's pretty brutal. And if you want to jump up to medium high settings at 1440p 60 frames per second, let's look at the kind of performance jump we're looking at here. So let's look at going from a 5700 XT to a 6800 XT. And let's look at all the GPUs along the way, which are somewhere in between these 1080p medium high or 1440, oh, sorry, 1080p low medium and 1440p medium high. So obviously the better you do here, you could either get higher frame rates at 1080p or turn up the settings a little bit, maybe jump up to 1440p. Uh, so if we j scroll up here, we can see that the 6800 XT is an 83% um, performance bump up from the 5700 XT, again, according to this relative performance, which usually gets you a pretty good baseline, pretty good ballpark, not always exactly um, correct for the game that you're looking at and on the latest drivers. And again, uh, jumping up to the 3080 Ti, we would normally see a performance jump from there. If I click on the 6800 XT, we can uh, look at it and, um, you know, it's listing the 3080 Ti is about 16% faster. Again, depends on the game, depends on the latest drivers, all of that. Um, but again, usually the baseline 3080 10 gigabyte would be closer to our 6800 XT. And um, so that's why I was wondering if that's VRAM related uh, on the recommendations, or if it's just Unreal Engine 5.1 running better on AMD GPUs. I have seen my AM, my testing of Unreal Engine 5 so far has mostly been using Fortnite because uh, the developer of Fortnite develops Unreal Engine 5. So Fortnite is one of the few games we have. It is I'm really the only major game that uh, hasn't just been a beta test and things like that, um, that uses Unreal Engine 5. And I have seen my AMD GPUs perform better in Unreal Engine 5 versus their NVIDIA counterparts than they had in Unreal Engine 4. Um, so perhaps it's an optimization thing. Like I said, could be VRAM related. Um, so yeah, hefty requirements here. We can take a look at the CPUs. So the CPUs here are an i7-9700, Ryzen 7 3700X. And again, this is their minimum for 60 FPS gameplay. So if you had a weaker CPU, uh, perhaps you would not be getting 60 FPS. And um, so the i7-9700 is an 8-core, eight 8-thread eight CPU. So it's an 8-core CPU, but without hyper-threading, uh, from 2019. So I know it's not the latest and greatest thing out there, but that was a high-end Intel gaming CPU uh, from 2019. And they're also pairing it with the uh, Ryzen 7 3700X, which is an 8-core CPU as well, although it can multi-thread up to 16 threads. Um, and this also came out in 2019. So we're talking high-end eight core CPUs from 2019 listed as minimums for 60 FPS gameplay. So of course you probably could play it on something less, but not be getting your 60 FPS. And this is a first person shooter. Um, so anyway, where you, you want your frames. Now, if we look at the, um, the recommended CPUs for the higher settings and 1440p, now normally turning up the resolution will not usually increase the demand on the CPU, uh, but turning up graphic settings can increase the, the load on the CPU, especially if there's any kind of ray tracing involved, uh, but also things like um, sometimes the amount of elements that are on screen that the CPU is having to deal with, like population densities, things like that. Uh, draw distances. There's different things um, that, that can affect the CPU uh, from the graphic settings. And we are seeing a graphic settings increase, uh, uh, not just a resolution increase in the system requirements. And they're jumping up to the 12700 from Intel, uh, which is basically a brand new CPU. I know we have the 1300 series out now as well, but like this is from 2022. Um, and this is a 12 core, 20 thread CPU, although the performance cores you'd be using in gaming are eight core, 16 thread, and then you get the, um, the extra efficiency cores, uh, which aren't that useful for your gaming performance. And then we have the Ray, uh, Ryzen 7 5700X, which again is an eight core, 16 thread. This is from 2022 and is a big jump up in perform gaming performance from the um, 3700X that we saw at those minimums. So, yeah, overall, the system requirements here are absolutely massive. They do say they might continue, they will continue optimizing the game, so these may change. 
But uh, yeah, what do you guys think about that? <laughs> Uh, they talk about the amount, the kind of vision that they were able to achieve using Unreal Engine 5. Like, hey, let's have a 400 foot walking mech level in the ocean and we can have the mech come under attack from airships and you're fighting inside the mech and you're fighting on top of the mech and maybe you almost fall off the mech at one point. And they're like, uh, well, th they decided not to cut back on anything like that and just to make it happen. Uh, and that's their their excuse for the uh, the demanding nature. Now, there's a lot of videos in this article talking about what they're able to achieve using Unreal Engine 5. There's some nice looks at some environments. Um, you can see the, the nice rendering of the water, nature kind of scene here. You can sort of skip around, uh, see some other scenes. This would probably be best viewed by you following the, following the link in my description and, and looking at this on your own on your own screen, but they're really showing off the effects and the lighting, the lumen lighting system does look excellent in Unreal Engine 5. Uh, they're showing how your, your cinematics are, are definitely rendered in engine. These aren't pre-rendered and it just goes right into your eye level. That's, I mean, that's a lot going on uh, on the screen here. And again, they say that everything should be very detailed up close thanks to Nanite. Um, so the, the cool thing with, with Nanite in Unreal Engine 5 is, all of these details can be extremely detailed and they're not flat textures um, that make it look like it's 3D and shadowed, but like you actually get up close and it really has the geometric detail and Nanite is able to just not render the things um, that you don't need to see when you're, when you're far away. Like it, it, it naturally culls out what you don't need to see. So, I mean, it does look pretty impressive. Um, they're also saying that due to Unreal Engine 5 compared to Unreal Engine 4, you're able to get uh, much larger areas because of the um, world partitions. Uh, it lets you split up those huge levels into smaller sections that can be streamed out of memory as the player moves through them. Um, so, I mean, it looks really cool. And I'm excited for pushing next generation tech. Um, I'm <laughs> a little sad to see that the minimum recommended GPU is a 2080 Super though. <laughs> Uh, that's a bit rough, um, but let's hope that the that it pays off and is worth it for the outcome that you're able to achieve. I am not, I'm a, l a little note on just game optimization at the end. I might do a whole video uh, talking about my thoughts on, on is a game optimized, but um, you can optimize for different things. An optimized game doesn't necessarily mean easy to run. I think that's what a lot of people think it means, or that's how they use it, right? They, they think it's optimized if it's easy to run. I don't think that's necessarily the case. Uh, but I mean, you have to choose what you mean for op optimized. Well, I think opti optimized is like, um, you're achieving the result you're trying to achieve in the most optimal way. So um, this certainly does not seem like it's optimized for supporting older GPUs, but let's hope that it's at least delivering something incredible for what you, you know, <laughs> for the hardware that it's asking. Personally, my favorite type of optimization is a game that is optimized to run on a wide range of hardware where it can support low-end hardware, be playable, and still look reasonable, but then fully take advantage of something like a 4090 and really just, uh, you know, be able to crush the highest GPU if you want to max it out and, and actually deliver visuals that pay off for doing that and be able to run on lower end hardware and maybe like a Steam Deck or something like that. So, so to me, I like to see a game that's optimized for being able to scale well, optimized for scaling, right? And to me, this one does at least doesn't look like at, in its current state, it's optimized for scaling to a wide set of hardware. It certainly like looks like their, their choice was what they said, choosing not to be practical, just pushing their vision, not worrying about supporting older technology, and just wanting to achieve the best thing that they could achieve. So that's what they were trying to optimize for. Um, let's hope it pays off. <laughs> what do you guys think about spe system specs like this? Uh, let me know in the comment section. And uh, when this game does come out, I think it was July 20th. Is it July 20th? There's gotta be, there's gotta be a, a you know, control F release date. Release, do they not talk, do they really not, say release date. I, I swear it was July 20th, guys. Uh, anyway, I can probably include it in the video description. It probably says it at the end of this thing. Aha, July 20th, I, I remembered correctly. Uh, I'll definitely be benchmarking this one when it comes out. <laughs> I hope all of you guys have an excellent day.